For those of you who don't know me, I'm Alexis. Together with Emilios, we started the Last Direct. Some of the people in the audience are employees of the Last Direct, so thank you for being here. Thank you, members of the press. Some of you are here, and thank you, good friends, and a lot of uh, familiar faces in the audience as well. Um, so let's get started. Some of you know who we are, some of you don't, so let's start with uh, some fundamentals. We are a new age, a new generation insurance company. We are all digital. We focus on personal lines. Personal lines means consumer lines. In other words, your home, your travel, your dog, your property, things like that. We don't do commercial, as in we don't do hotels, we don't do ships, we don't do factories, we don't do anything of the sort. We are very digital in nature. We're digital in everything that we do. And we use cutting edge technology and what is nowadays called artificial intelligence, machine learning. From our perspective, we, being an insurance company, we're not a broker, we're not an agent, we're a fully regulated insurance company. That means that we require a lot of capital. So to start an insurance company, like starting a bank, you need to go to the regulator and show that you're fit and proper, yet you have a lot of capital to start your business. We are lucky enough to be backed by a number of international organizations, like the World Bank, the EIFC, uh, Third Point, which is a $17 billion hedge fund. Um, we also have Portage, which is a, a big Canadian family backing us, and a number of all-star investors, world-class family offices. From the local investors, we've got the Levendis family. We're in their beautiful building right now. We also have the Varinoyanis family. We have a number of other individuals that have been very supportive to us from the very beginning. In total, we've raised $23.8 million in order to get started. And uh, we are lucky to be called the first investments of Endeavor in Europe, and also with the largest investment in the insurance sector in Cyprus over the last 10 years. We also have a very good long-term strategic partnership with one of the biggest reinsurance companies in the world. Reinsurance, for those of you that don't know what it is, is basically the insurance company for insurance companies. So we are partners of Swiss Re. Swiss Re is the second biggest reinsurance company in the world with about 200 billion in assets. Now, what is it that we do? Um, we have in our logo the phrase rethink insurance. Basically, what we're trying to be is the Amazon of insurance. We copy what Amazon has done for retail, which is we use a lot of technology, a lot of lean and cost effective operations in order to be able to service the consumer throughout the insurance value chain. We try to restructure or rethink the insurance value chain. We um, Similar to, to Amazon, we want to be slick throughout. We want to use a lot of data, we want to use a lot of technology to be able to deliver a better product at a better price and a better service to the consumer. So when you come and buy car insurance from us, we want to make sure that we give you a better product than everybody else. We want to be sure that we're the cheapest in the market and also that we have very good service when we service you. From our perspective, we distribute directly to the consumer. We don't believe that we should have layers and layers of middlemen, which is a characteristic of the insurance sector. And we also have insurance in a box, as we call it, where we work with brands that the consumers love, whether it's telecoms, whether it's retailers, whether it's e-commerce sites, we give them an insurance product to distribute. We favor transparency. We're very strongly believers that the consumer should know exactly what they're buying and how much they're paying for it. And also the service, we wanna be the first ones to know if we're not doing our job properly. In terms of how we do it, Building a company, especially in Greece and Cyprus, is not the easiest of things. I guess there's three main characteristics that we wanted to touch upon. The first one is you need to hire very good people. Uh, a lot of our rock star people are here, as I said before. I think the challenge for us was hire them young, hire them hungry, and make sure that when we hire people, they're smart, passionate, and that they do have this belief that they can actually change the world. From our perspective, we believe that you should hire people, train them, support them, and let them, let them do the job. We have 83 employees in total, uh, 59 of them in Greece. In Greece, we have the service unit of our business. So our client service team, our claim support, when somebody crashes in a motor crash, we will answer your phone there. It's a 24 seven service. We also have our marketing teams in Greece. And in Cyprus, we have, I would say more, the brain of the company. So we have finance, we have software development, and we have a quant unit. In terms of backgrounds, we, we have brought a lot of people from England. We have given relocation bonuses to some people that joined us coming from the UK where they had quite interesting jobs there. And then from our perspective, we have a full diversity of people. So we have anybody from a stand-up comedian to a PhD from Chicago, all the way down to a beekeeper. From our perspective, um, 
We are recognized as an employer of choice, uh, definitely in Greece and also in Cyprus. And at the same time, uh, we have been awarded as um, the best place to work a couple of years ago, and that's an award that we're very proud of. We also invest heavily in technology. That is something that most companies in the region do not do. We've invested about seven and a half million in technology to date. We have a culture as a company which is very much focused on engineering, on quants, analytics, and also on heavy DevOps. And from our perspective, we, um, we, we have about 25 engineers in total. Um, we employ cutting edge technology, we use agile methodology for those of you who are more technically minded, and um, we believe heavily in investing in our people in this regard. We have been awarded a number of awards in the technology space, one of them being from the European Union. Uh, it's called the Marie Curie. A lot of you are academics, I believe, and you would know what it is. So we are involved with Sydney University, with the Center of National Research in Italy, and we're spending a lot of time with them looking at cyber. The third thing that we do is rethink everything, as we call it. It's more the disruptor mentality that we want to have as a company. So that is not only in how we do business, but also what is our role in society. We do believe that we can make a difference. And especially when you look at some of the companies that are older than us in age, they haven't really focused too much on that. So from our perspective, we've done everything from fixing potholes in Greece, which is a project that is very close to our heart. At the same time, we've given a number of scholarships. We just announced today that we're doing a partnership with the English School in this regard. And um, from our perspective, we're focusing a lot on making sure that we work with the local partners that we have, whether it's garages, whether it's people that fix houses and all that, in order to make sure that they're involved. Where are we now? We are 17 and a half million in revenue. We're growing fast. We're growing between 35 and 40% year on year. We have about 80,000 active clients. We do about 150,000 transactions a year. And since the beginning of our company, we've settled about 30,000 claims. In the concept of insurance, that's really your product. How many people are you paying when they need um, insurance? From our perspective, we are multi-product now, multi-country. Since June this year, we are in Cyprus. We also do property insurance. We didn't do it before. We were originally just a car company. We're beginning to look more and more into other products. We're looking into travel insurance, into device insurance. And as I said before, some of them we go directly to consumer. Some of them we just work with partners, like Aegean, like Wind, like Practica, like a number of other people. The other thing that we've done is, in the concept of rethinking everything, we change the product. So now you can buy by the day. And also we settle instantly. So in some claims, the fastest claim that we've ever settled was actually 48 seconds. So somebody reported it to us, 48 seconds later, they were paid. No paper, everything digital, everything online, we're dealing with everything. Now, the, the other thing to bear in mind is we're just at the beginning. We're still 2% of the Greek market. We're still 0% of the Cyprus market. And we still haven't gone to any other markets. So from us, there's a lot of potential. We build a very scalable business. We have a lot of smart people. We have very scalable technology. So the world is our oyster. In terms of um, the next step for us, uh, on the, there's a concept now these days in technology articles about ecosystem. Effectively, what that is, is that consumers don't necessarily want to buy insurance. They're thinking about the concept of a mobility ecosystem. Similarly, when you think about your house, you don't think about your mortgage. You don't think about your home insurance. You think about everything that has to do with your house whether it's utilities, whether it's about fixing your house, whether it's about paint or anything that you're going to buy. So you have this concept of ecosystems. Given that we're a digital player, given that we're touching consumers and we have very good promoter scores and people like us, we want to play a broader role into that. Just to give you an example, in Greece, we have road assistance for every single one of our clients. So when somebody breaks down, it's not a crash, somebody breaks down with a battery problem or something like that, we will go pick them up and then we will take them to a garage. We created the biggest marketplace for garages in Greece, where we have about 1,200 garages connected real time with us. So the minute you, you actually have a mechanical failure, we can get people to bid for you, to come and say, I'm gonna be cheaper than the other guy. So in the Cyprus context, you have a mechanical failure, you have a BMW, you have Villa Gudas or whoever it may be, but you also have other people. So we direct traffic to get the cheapest price for the consumer. Now the consumer in Greece turns around and says, I don't have any money and I need to fix my car call it a piston or something like that, which is 800 euros, 65% of the Greeks don't have financing. So we're beginning to look into the financing option now. We want to give emergency funding. We're working now to figure out, Michaelis, who's in the audience, is actually leading that effort for us. We want to give about 150 million in financing over the next three, four years. Now, all of these things, unless you have a direct digital platform that is scalable, you cannot do. And I think one of the people outside asked me, what is the difference between Last Direct and other insurance companies? I think if you come with this rethink approach and you start building in a scalable manner, 
then you see a lot more opportunities very differently than if you have the traditional heavy paper bureaucratic way of an insurance operating. The third thing, which is uh, especially now with the World Bank backing us since the beginning of the year, we're beginning to look at other markets which are similar to Greece and Cyprus. That is typically smallish to medium-sized markets where the margins are really thick because the incumbents have it too easy for way too long. So we're starting to look at the Balkans, we're starting to look at the Middle East. We're probably a year or two away from that, but it is something that we're beginning to view. So guys, um, why home insurance and uh, why this big fuss about bad, bad banks and why in Cyprus in June? If I were to ask every single one of you guys uh, how, many, how many insurance contracts you have, um, probably you have one. And that's car insurance. I hope not, because otherwise you'd be arrested. <laughs> but if I were to ask every single one of you whether you own a house or whether you rent a house, how many of you have home insurance? The real answer is only one third. In Greece, it's actually 15%. And when you actually double click on that one, those of you who have home insurance, usually you have a mortgage. No sensible human being uh, who lives in the other Mediterranean is buying home insurance just for fun. The Germans are buying home insurance like uh, there's no tomorrow. They have 10 contracts, they buy ski insurance, they buy a bunch of other things. So the number one thing we were shocked when we came to Cyprus or to Greece is that the extent of underinsurance or the extent that people do not insure their homes. So there's about 440,000 homes in Cyprus. Only about 140,000 of them are actually insured. That is happening not in London or in some you know, Swedish place. It's happening in a place where we have earthquakes, we have fires, we have floods. Okay. And when we saw some of the recent events, whether it was Kefalonia a few years ago, or whether it was so yeah, in Cyprus, or whether it was muddy. The day after the event, the extent of under insurance was pretty clear. So two thirds of Cyprus was said, oh, I don't have insurance. And guess what? Five sixths of the Greeks said, I don't have insurance. I guess they expect God or the government to pay for whatever happens. Now, um, it's not just you know, the people who are to blame. It's not just the lack of information, the lack of education. You can blame all that. And we've done a lot of research, we've talked to consumers like yourselves, and we realize that there's a lot of misinformation about home insurance. People don't know what to buy. If you ask someone, where do you buy home insurance, probably they have no idea. And the worst thing that we discovered is like when we did the research, you realize that when you tell someone how much do you think your home insurance costs, it's usually between two and three times the actual cost. It's shocking. And then it's okay, fine, the consumer is not educated, it's um, something to do with the Mediterranean issue, we're not Anglo-Saxons, we're not German. But is the product okay? Is the insurance industry offering the best product to the consumer and the consumer is saying, no, thank you very much, I'm not going to buy? And that was the second thing we realized, that um, the product hasn't changed for the last 50 years. The consumer right now Every single one of you, including you know, my, my father who's 78, has one of these. Okay. You can buy through this Sulaya, you can order from Amazon, you can you know, do a lot of things, you can get things delivered to your specific home address from China. They will find you from here. Okay. Buy insurance, you go to a bank, you go to an insurance company, you get a form that your father, your grandfather, even your great-grandfather had exactly the same form. So, the product is shit. We have to say it. So how do you expect someone who's underinsured in a country of earthquakes, with floods, with fires and stuff like that, to go in and buy insurance? So even if you go out there and say, hey, I'm scared. My house is at the risk of an earthquake, a flood, and a fire. And I need to go and insure it. Okay? Such a simple thing. I will end up in some kind of crazy building, talking to some crazy guy, lots of papers, giving me a product that I have no idea what it is, no information, filling forms that were written for my great-grandfather, and then asking me to pay a lot of money and feel good about it. And by the way, no one feels good about buying insurance. It's a grudge buy. You feel good when you buy shoes, when you feel, you feel good even when you bet. But when you buy insurance, you, know, you don't feel good about it. So, 
the product actually is not that good. For something as simple as something that protects your home from three risks, the product is really bad. And we haven't really gone through what the retailers have gone through, what the travel guys have gone through to revolutionize the product. And then comes those who get insured. So let's ask those who actually got insured in Cyprus, are they getting a good deal? No, they're not. They're getting screwed. Usually these people um, are those who have a mortgage. And usually this product was enforced on them by the banks. So look at a couple of numbers. Out of the 100 million that the Cyprus consumer is paying every year for home insurance, 60% belongs to the four insurance companies that are linked to banks or used to be linked to banks before they became paid in. Okay? So four banks, four insurance companies, control 60%. The other 40% is distributed across 18 different insurance companies. Fair? Okay. There's okay, maybe it's a freak of nature. Maybe these guys are really good at selling, right? Maybe they are really, really, really good. They are like the Goldman Sachs of this region. They can actually convince someone to buy the best insurance product. We went with our team and we collected 10 years of data. And this is public data. You can go to the insurance association, you can download it, you can look at it yourself and enjoy it. <coughs> the Cyprus consumer paid 1.1 billion in insurance premium for his home. That's the one third that he was insured. I'm not talking about the two thirds that wasn't insured. So 1.1 billion. How much do you think he got back <coughs> in claims? 100 million. So, there, you pay 1.1 billion, you get back 100. And how many commissions were paid? Commissions to go to Remos, to, you know, you can enjoy yourself, right? Commissions, okay? 300 million. So, the guy was selling you the product, was getting paid three times more than you got paid in claims. Fair. And this was concentrated in the four guys. Okay? So, when we saw this thing, uh, we said, okay, well, it must be happening somewhere else. It must be happening in England. You know, uh, this is such an amazing thing. I'm sure someone is doing it. You compare the situation in Cyprus alone, the 30% the that are insured with the four banks, with the 1.1 billion, they're making more profits than the entire London market. So, Swiss Re, Munich, and all these guys who eventually are getting there is, they're so happy about Cyprus. They're making more money in Cyprus than from the entire UK market. It's a great deal. Okay. And then the other thing that shocked us is that, okay, how come the Cyprus consumer, the clever, super excellent Cyprus consumer who's buying from China, who's traveled the world and so on, how come this guy hasn't changed? This is someone who has been, you know, bailed in, bailed out, bailed through everything, right? How come this thing is not of raising any alarms. So, okay, we have to change it. We have to do something about it and, you know, we have to come up and launch a product. So, we went back to the drawing board. We said, okay, okay, guys, we need to fix it for Cyprus and Greece. So, the first thing we asked ourselves is, what have we learned from Motor? We, will have, we have 80,000 80, clients. We pay 30,000 claims a year. So, what is so cool about Motor that we can bring to our friends here in the home insurance side. Things that we learned, paperless, digital, on demand, by the day. So things that are you, all of you guys are used to from using this thing, okay? You can buy things on demand. You don't buy Netflix for a year, you buy on demand. You don't buy, you know, any service, you know, for like five years and, you know, you commit yourself to like a thousand euros, you get it through here, okay? You don't fill forms for anything else. You don't fill forms for even, you know, depositing money, investing money, betting money, it's over here. And one challenging thing that we actually asked ourselves, although we are insurance people and we spend the last 25 years of our lives doing insurance, insurance is no different to a bet. It's exactly the same thing. Insurance, you're betting that you're not going to die. That's life insurance. You're betting that you're not going to go to Yasuo Hospital. You're betting that your house will not burn, okay? You can bet 15 million different time bets online. Insurance, you have to go to the branch and fill in the form. Here, that's fair. Okay, so I said, guys, let's go back to the drawing board and let's start from what we, we learned from Motor and try to figure out exactly how we're going to build this product uh, from scratch. 
So from our perspective, we said, okay, um, how can we get this product to the consumer with just one question? Just one question. Just what's the most important thing we need to know about the house? Okay. And the answer is geolocation. Just tell us where your house is. This one here. Fantastic. That's how a taxi driver will find you. That's how Amazon will find you. That's how everyone will find you. And then when you, when you put your house on the map, first of all, you benefit from things that we don't have around here. We don't have addresses for every house. My uh, mother-in-law in Brodermos doesn't have an address. She knows where the house is, but she doesn't have an address. So you solve even a problem that a lot of the Greek islands, a lot of the Cyprus locations are. So your house on the damn map, that has a latitude, that has a longitude. And by doing that, because technology has changed, because the reinsurance companies have changed, we know around 85% of the risk, which is flood, it's earthquake, and it's fire. We don't have tsunamis. We don't have you know, tornadoes, except the one a few weeks ago in you know, here. But that tells you a lot about your house. It's like the job in the aquarium. But you know a lot by just putting someone on the thumb up. And then, very simply, you know, the guys who actually take the risk, the Swiss risk, the Munich risk, because at the end of the day, these are the guys who are going to pay for your damage. It's not bank of Cyprus, it's not the last day. We are the carrier for someone else. If there's an earthquake touched within Cyprus, if it wasn't for the insurance companies, the whole island would be done. No one actually would be that. So once you've done that, then you can start asking some other questions. And those questions, because every time you know, speak to a consumer, if I ask someone, okay, you put your house on the market, they're like, ah, my house is special. My house is so special because my uncle Panic was built it. It's better than, no, no, no. 85, your house will burn down, whether it's by the Nikos, by Fish, or whatever, and your house will actually come down by an earthquake. Now, let's talk about the special things. And the special things that people care about, whether it's the materials, or there are databases that we know about this stuff. All we need to ask you, according to the new GDPR law, is like, are you okay for us to ask someone else about your house? Okay? And even basic questions that your insurance companies will ask you, like, is your house being occupied? What the hell? I mean, you know, you, foodie knows whether your house is being occupied because you just delivered to you. Or, you know, is your house near a forest? Google knows, right? So, by simply taking the geolocation and tapping through these databases, you can come up with a price. So, Mr. Consumer, Mr. Underinsured, uneducated consumer, here's a product for you that you can actually put your house on the map and you can actually price it and buy it. And not only that, you can buy it for a single day, you can buy it for six months, you can buy it for as long as you want. Now, you haven't solved one problem. What happens when you have a claim? Right? What happens when, oh yeah, my house burns down, are you going to pay me? How am I going to pay me? And Or I had a flood, I had some, some issues, what's going to happen? So we had to solve that extra last mile. By the way, house insurance, is much, much simpler than a car. For cars, usually we have about 30% a year of shit to deal with. Okay, road assistance, you know, crashing, and it's a difficult one because you're in the middle of nowhere and you have to go and pick you up. There. So if you have done car insurance, property is really simple. Property is less than 1% actual claims. But we have to solve this for you. So what we need is, okay, <coughs> How do I know that every single consumer we have actually has something that we can pay him into? Enter Revolut. So we went to Revolut and said, guys, can you make sure that every single consumer that we insure has a Revolut card? That whatever happens, I can wire money straight to this guy. So it's a flooding, he needs to leave the house immediately, he needs to go to a new hotel. Sure, he's 120 euros, we're 24 7, off he goes. So for us, the Revolut connection, it wasn't about, hey, is a new cool thing uh, to put your money in. It's actually the last mile for our claim service. So I can convince the consumer that you're okay with me. 24-7, anything happens, we solve it. Now, clearly for the house, we're going to have lots of time to fix your house, to bring in your furniture and so on. The most important thing is to make sure that you're going to be okay on the spot. Good luck without this technology, without all these things to call your insurance agent, who's probably going to be at Remos, 
celebrating your commissions, uh, to come and fix your house. So, technology is not something that you use to go and distribute the new product, it's something that totally revolutionizes the product. So, we have the product, we were ready. We wanted to make sure that everyone understands the rules. Because unfortunately on this beautiful island, and extensively to the other beautiful country called Greece, people don't really get the rules. Okay? So you're buying insurance, you're investing your money, you're getting bailed in, and so you don't really get the rules. The rules are quite simple. First of all, they are pan-European. There's no exception. Mario Draghi is something, everyone has to do. And all these rules effectively protect the consumer. Everything you hear about Solvency 2, Basel 3, IDD, all these acronyms, they're good for you as consumers. They want to make sure that you guys are protected from the bad companies that exist out there. They want to make sure that, number one, whoever sells you something has the money to honor it, hence Solvency, hence Basel 3, and so on. It's telling you the right information, so insurance distribution directives, making sure that whatever they tell you is right. And also there's a perfectly functioning, an open market that is functioning pretty well, without any bad behaviors and you know, uh, competitive issues. So, three things to keep here in your mind, and you don't have to worry about the rest of the data configured rules. Number one, you have the freedom to choose. What does it mean? If you want to buy home insurance, whether you have a mortgage, whether you don't have a mortgage, you are free to choose any product. It doesn't mean because you bought your mortgage from here, someone has to sell you their own shoes. Okay? Number two, whoever is trying to sell you something, whether it's us, the bank, the broker, your uncle, has to give you information about the product, about what it involves, what it doesn't involve, all that information, all the way down to even You can, at any point in time, decide to switch without suffering consequences, direct consequences, cancellation fee, da, da, or indirect threats. If you leave my insurance, wait and see what I'm going to do to your loan. Or indirect threats along the lines of, hey, you know what, it's, you know, when I was here for you, or, and, you know, you don't, it's like, you know, divorcing or splitting up or things like that. It's like the emotional thing, like, you know, I used to love you so much and you don't love me anymore. So, this is pretty clear. So, those three rules are something that people have abused for a long, long time. So, what happened to us? We launched. We launched in May with a big bad, bad bank campaign in Cyprus. We also launched Greece at the same time. It was the first time ever that a single product and property was launched across jurisdictions, exactly the same product. Same insurance pattern, same everything, exactly the same platform. And we're expecting to see bad, bad behavior. We heard about it, we documented it, we said, okay, we're ready. So we built, for the last 108 or so days, our own concierge desk. The only reason we have a concierge desk, we wanted to listen. We wanted to make sure that all these bad behaviors, by banks, by brokers, by anyone, was recorded. We've done mystery shopping, we've done hundreds of recorded calls, we've even visited branches ourselves. And we said, okay, how are these guys doing? So they saw us coming to the market, we had quite an interesting campaign, and we managed to collect a lot of very, very interesting cases. And today is the first day we're going to present those cases to you. Those cases will be made available straight after to regulators, to shareholders, we'll talk to you about it later. But we just want to walk you through these bad, bad behaviors. That our concierge desk was actually dealing and still dealing with every single day. Number one, who the hell is a last direct? So, somebody buys from a last direct, goes to their bank and says, Hey, I've got a new insurance policy. I'm so happy. I did it online. I put my house on the map. See, it's very nice. And uh, I'm so happy. Can I please? Uh, Divorce. And the answer was on a recorded line, on emails, on anything. 
Um Gast da Welt. Und die sind auf das Geld. Die sind so ein schönes Papa. Um, they don't exist. They're crooks. They, they wanna live tomorrow. They don't love you. Right? Like, all of these things, you're laughing, but it's actually happening, right? <laughs> Every single day of our lives. And not only that, even the attitude of those, the, the best one that we actually love is that the last time it's a bunch of people who go to the office in swimming suits. <laughs> Which actually, I, I never was in swimming suits, so I don't know anyone in <laughs> I thought it was quite cool, actually. Yeah, maybe we should try it. The second one is, um, we, we, once we manage to convince these people that we're not crooks, we're not launderers, we're around and we're here to stay, they obviously started playing the bureaucracy game. So you would go as a client, you would bring your last direct PDF with your aerial photograph of where your house is, you've marked it and all that, and they would say, I don't see the original. <laughs> and you're like, well, electronic signature has been approved, European regulation, this and that. It's not the original. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, uh, let's try again. There is this specific regulation by the you know, central bank over here that you're forced to recognize electronic signature. This and that. There's a couple of lawyers in the room can verify that. The stamp is not at the right place. It's like you don't need a stamp based on the regulation and this and that and the other. I'm not so sure one of the signatures, because you know, in, in the old days you had to stamp it and the two of us needed to sign. One of the signatures is not touching the stamp. You need to go back and take it again. So you ended up having people that recognized the last direct, but when it came down to the bureaucracy, they started being quite focused on the signatures, on the stamps, unnecessary visits to the branch, uh, come and bring it in. Why don't you come and bring it in for a little bit? We'll have a look, maybe we can make you another offer. They started going through all that process. So when you actually look at how much time, even for some people, and even for our own employees, when you look at Stadios who's sitting on the second seat, took him a month to change from Hellenic, a whole month. Uh, a pro uh, probably about 25 emails back and forth, phone calls, three visits to the branch. You had to convince him, convince them that he had to switch from Mangibriaki to Alas Direct. It was almost to the point that he had to tell them that I risk getting fired. It's my employer I want to switch to. <laughs> so anyway, so the, the, the first two points, obviously, as Emilio said before, was not recognizing Alas Direct. We're all crooks on that. And the second one is we do recognize Alas Direct, but what you brought us is not acceptable. So pass by the branch and all that. And then uh, enter stage three. So um, it's not the right contract. It's, I recognize the last direct now. Um, I found the list that uh, was on the website of the regulator and you know, the Bank of Greece. Uh, it's, uh, I'm okay, I don't need the original, but um, it's the wrong kind of fire. It's not the fire. Right. And the earthquake is not the one I, I, I want. It's, it's not written properly. And, and also, uh, you should have the square meters of your house on the contract, because otherwise it's not a valid contract. I also forgot to tell you that um, our contract uh, is describing flooding um, in a slightly different way than yours. And you know, our flood includes also the flood from the River Kuris. Uh, you know, you it's there. So take it away and you know ask them to redraft the contract, please. Okay. And uh, also, by the way, as you're going back, uh, let me remind you again that the last time we don't really company and you know maybe it's backed by some crazy Russian. So, so um, all of this shit. Um, and again, those guys, I don't know how fearless they are. I don't know how uneducated they are. They're doing it on recorded lines, on emails, on telephones, on, on everything. And the thing that frustrated us, and there's actually a fourth one, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll ask you to guess the fourth one, but from the first three things that we've seen, it's the arrogance. It's the pure, damn arrogance of someone to play against rules, which are not rules. This, we're, not, we're not a kebab show house. We're not, we're not a run. We are a regulated company. We are operating in regulated conditions imposed by you know, central banks and about with regulators, and the arrogance by companies who've been bailed in Companies who actually stole money from accounts on damn recorded lines doing all the stuff. You know what's the funniest thing though? It's um, when, when you would actually go physically to the branch for the third time and you would bring your piece of paper with a stamp at the right place and this and that and the other. You would actually say, can I see, Mr. Consumer, the actual insurance cover policy document you had from the previous insurance company? And you would see that all the things that they asked for from us were not valid, were not there. 
to the point that they would be asking us to change the sum assured. In other words, how much is the reconstruction cost for this house? They would ask us to increase it to a higher level. They would say 80,000 to cover the loan is not good enough. You need to take it to 130,000. The consumer will say, but currently I'm at 72,000. And you will bring this to their attention. And what we did is we put every single one of these uh, cases on email, on paper. We called the banks. We went all the way to the CEO level of the banks, the CEO level of the associate insurance company, and went there. But the fourth thing that they did was, of course, once you get into the branch, they will say, you know what? What is this piece of paper? How much is it? We'll make you exactly the same offer. Actually, we'll give you five euros less. And this is anti-competitive. So returning back to what Emilius was saying before, you have the freedom to choose, you have the freedom to be informed about what you're buying, and you have the freedom to switch, to cancel. And this is definitely anti-competitive. So one of the things that we're going to do in the next few weeks, we're going to go to the competition authorities, the consumer organizations, all the regulators, both in Greece and in Cyprus, and bring the whole file to them. Original, stamped, with the right signatures. <laughs> so, um, we'll, so, last couple of slides from our side. Um, first of all, we're here to stay. Um, this is the first of many, many sessions. And I think for us, on purpose, we, we did what we did the last five months. We launched, we watched, we measured, and we now kind of, we're ready for wave number two, three, four, five. And I guess the average age from our side, 28 years old, we are the oldest. So by longevity, by actuarial tables, we're going to outlive them. So unless someone who's 16 now trying to start an insurance company, so we don't have patience. We have lots and lots of patience. We're not here to do something quick. Um, and frankly, from our side, it's our homecoming. We've been telling the Greek uh, consumers that it's not our homecoming. It's a capitalistic move and this and that. The other, we came from London. Greece was not a Muzaka moment for us last year. It is a Muzaka moment. So this is Tumba. <laughs> this is for us our phone come. We have more than 50 percent of our people are from Cyprus or they link to Cyprus. We have our brain of the company here. So they better have a good defense. And they better have a good defense for the next 30 years, not for the next 30 months. Now, next steps from <coughs> us, the regulators. We're going to the regulators. Whether it's Mario Draghi or Nui or whatever it is, we're going there. And we're going there with a very specific demand. Put these guys in shape. Okay? And it's not a joke. And when it is, as Alexis said, when it says the regulator, it's not just the, know, the bank, the central bank, or the our own regulator, every consumer associations, accounting professions, every single day we hear about this one. And that's the first day today. Okay? And then we go to the banks, the bubble banks. They have shareholders, they have credit rating agencies, they have a lot of things. And let me remind you something that the banks are promising the world. They're coming out of crisis, they want to create fees, they want to make, they want to charge, they, they like this kind of stuff. So the question there is like, are you going to play fair? We're going to make you play fair. Okay. And also, when it comes to the, the bank side of things, when you project, when you even take your consumer for granted, they even have the audacity in their annual statements to congratulate themselves about how stable the insurance income is. Unbelievable. I mean, you, you, read that, you should read those articles and have fun. Insurance was as high as 80% of their fee income. They're proud. Still, the consumer, you are sticky. You're not going anywhere. Because what? We have four trucks for you. Okay. So every single guy who's involved with banks want to hear about this. The shareholders will hear about this one. So how is the bank going to create money, especially in a world called insurance? And it's not just us. Insurance is a small part. How about other fees? Credit card fees. Deposit fees. So. It's not, there might be a company called Revolut, there might be another company called, I don't know, ABC that is trying to, to town to us for fairness as well. And any bad behavior, so I don't care because a bank has 4,000 employees and need to pay them. I don't care about that, I care about you, the consumer. And the third one, we have a promise to the consumer. We, we, we have 80,000 consumer degrees, we, we want to make sure that we are fair to you. You have a choice to go anywhere. You can buy insurance from England, from Bulgaria, from anywhere. Why should you, the consumer, have a bad deal? Especially given the stuff that the consumer has suffered on this planet, on this island, over the last five years. I guess just to, I, I know we're coming up to close of eight o'clock. I think just to leave you with one additional point. Some of you ask outside, so me as a consumer, I know I'm getting screwed, I realize it now. 
Um, I know I need to do something about it. Um, so what would you suggest that we do? I, I guess the question is ultimately for you as consumers to start with um, speaking to the ones that are not insured. Um, we are, if you have a look at the seismographic map and you look at where Cyprus is, is dead on on the center. So if you're not insured and we're not saying insure yourself with the last direct, insure yourself. Because if there is an earthquake at some point in time, then people similar to Mati in Greece, we're going to suffer a lot of victims, we're going to suffer a lot of physical damage, and in that case, it is something that we should really all have. The fact that the banks have made it overly expensive and overly bureaucratic in the past to get access to a product, an insurance product like this, you should look at companies like Elastaric and others, and you should look to get insured. The second one is the ones that are with the banks right now, and they are getting screwed. We're here to help you, uh, whether, again, you convert with us or with anybody else. We want to hear your story. We want to hear what has gone wrong, what you believe is anti-competitive, and we're making our concierge desk available to all of you to record any sort of complaint that you have, to take with our big file, with the right stamp and the right signatures to the regulators. The last thing is when you actually look at the savings that you can generate, even in a market like Cyprus, we said, what if somebody were to move from one of the highest profitability banks into a platform like ourselves and shift their insurance cover? How much would we actually save as consumers? And the answer for that is about 40 million. If you add Greece into that and shift from banks to a more efficient player linked to a reinsurance capital, which is a wholesale provider, avoiding the 85% margin and the Remos um, carnations that they're going to put in there. You're talking about a half a billion every year, repeatedly for the 20 years of your mortgage. So just leaving you with this thought is um, we came into this market with a bad, bad bank campaign. We wanted to cause a reaction just to see how the banks would react. They reacted much worse than what we originally thought. We've been recording every single step of the way until then. And to be fair, some banks have been better than others. Some banks are beginning to realize that they have a lot of internal problems and they have to fix. And some of them have actually reached out to us and they said, help us understand what we're doing wrong. Others are a bit more arrogant than that. You only have to look at their profit and loss statements at the end of the year to figure out who is who. Thank you.